Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Amigos, the podcast about everything Amiga. Amigos is a proud member of the Throwback Network, your home for quality retro podcasts. And now, here are your hosts, Aaron Dowdy and John Bodokar Schaller. Hey everybody, welcome to the Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we've got mail. Drop some mail on the floor, boss. That's not mail. Oh. Uh, so this is from O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, uh, one of our <laughs> oldest and best fans. How do you know he's old? Well, he's been with us since the beginning. Oh, that's right. Since the beginning of time. I'm going to open this up. Have you ever seen what it looks like at O'Brien's? It must be just a hall of wonderment. Uh, in my mind, it's just beautiful. <laughs> like it's on the, on the top of a mountain, you know. And in my a, mind, it's a little bit Irish, too, because it's O'Brien's. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, so it's I got, got shamrocks and stuff. I'm not buying that now. <laughs> shamrocks and fjords. All right, I'm having trouble. Okay, I got it. I broke they know, how to, they know how to pack stuff over there. Yeah, they do. They do. Look at this. On this, there's the signature. 100 Noak. Knock. Is that, what's that in, in American? I have no idea. I hope you didn't spend too much of Brian's. We're not worth it. Let me see something here. What's that say? Old, oh, okay. That's an old floppy dog. <laughs> well, I want to open this package. Um, this is how we're going to start. Just a big up package opener. I just yeah. rip it and we get goodies. So, here we go. It's an unbagging. Before the un now it's an unpapering. Oh man, we've got real Norwegian newspaper too. Oh, is it a TV guy? Yeah. I want to look at that. That's awesome. Mm. Look, first thing you see, Viking. That's the way it should be. This is Viking programming all day long in Norway. Just people plundering other people. Yep. All right. Let me see that newspaper. Yeah, let's, let's inspect the newspaper first. This guy is the king of the Vikings. <laughs> this guy right here. Look at this guy. Right there. Look at that. Hey. Playing Pinocchio with your brain. I like that. Yeah, that's a TV. Oh, no. Oh, it's a crossword. Oh, it's a crossword. Wow, we're way off, aren't we? They do things Matt weird. Matt Fordorge. That's some kind of cooking magazine. Okay. Um, how, how is your uh, ability to read this? What, what, what language uh, just, are we looking at here? Yeah, so this would be Norwegian. <laughs> My Norwegian skills are nil. Have you, uh, do you know have any Norwegian skills? Not at all. Uh, Not at I all. Guess we're on that. Thank you for the newspaper. Yeah. That'll be. Oh, look at her. Wow. Got here. Oh, you got here's your. This is what he's like the one. Outboard, outboard motor. Yeah. Uh, I got nothing on either. This is like a gambling thing. Bes a stroller. You know, we're probably mocking this stuff at its charities. And this is probably like the <laughs> obituaries. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, so that was the newspaper. <laughs> now it's time to get to the meat. This is the Amiga Kids Pack. <laughs> Three television greats. You're and kidding me. That's this a... is from um, IS Software. Is. Is. Oh, no, A AS. Is that Ducula? Yeah. Count Ducula. Postman Pat, yep. which I'm not familiar That's with. That's a British uh, okay. children's thing, I believe. And the Munsters. That we know. Yep. So, if that see that wow. kind of you green screen's getting in the way. It doesn't, it doesn't. There we go. There we go. So you can see right through <laughs> here. <laughs> so, we okay. thank you. Uh, let's, see, let's open this up. Let's... Oh, this might not actually be what we thought it yeah, was. Postman Pat. I've heard that mentioned many times. Look, all models, including the 1200 and 600. I wonder what this was. Well, this was, a, it was a, what do you mean? Oh, it was, I think there were three games. Those Have you the heard of these games? games? No, but, you know, EU only. <coughs> I love it. All, all right, right. We're so we're on. moving on now. We've got a brochure for Amiga Future. Mm. And uh, so this is just talking about the magazine. So it's written, it's got uh, German and English. Good mag. Great mag. I really enjoyed the ones I've looked at. We've got some even more newspapers. Get that out of the way. Okay. Oh, 
first thing you see. Look at that. WWF WrestleMania. Oh, ho, ho, ho. they know what we like. Look at that. Beautiful. That's a multi-disc game? Yeah. Here's disc two. Oh, ho, 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 ho. beautiful. So have you played that before? I don't... I don't know. I've played some games, but I don't remember that one. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. <coughs> and then, look at this. He knows exactly what we like. The game Summer Edition. Outstanding. It's funny, I was just listening to uh, Rob Flacco Harris, pod, an older podcast of his, where he had, it was about Copy Fest, and he mm -hmm. talked about someone ripping off his bootleg of the game's Winter Edition. <laughs> and in Now, are behold, these different than Summer Games They are. Games? They absolutely wow. are. Well, they are and they are. I mean, this is from Epix, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, as I recall, they were different games. I guess maybe like a newer version or okay. whatnot, so that'll be kind of neat. I've not played that on the media. We've got World Cup Soccer Italia 90. Which is uh, the subject of another Kim uh, Kim Justice video that she just put out. So that's uh, we we'll we'll check that out. Hey, I'm turn I'm turning the corner on soccer. Oh yeah, what's that say? Donk two donk. Oh, it's uh, I thought two that was donk. the issue. Is that the name of it? Two donk. I don't know. Multiplayer platform madness with a duck. Kinky. It wasn't he a wrestler? Donk. Not doink. Oh. Okay, Crazy Sue. Crazy Sue. I think I went out with her once. <laughs> and we've got Grand Prix, which is a very multi-disc game. <laughs> Three discs for uh, the Micro Lovely. Pros Grand Prix. Aren't these nice? Wow. Grand Prix. All right, we'll give that a shot. Free with Amiga 600. Wow. What a deal. <laughs> and finally, the Kids Pack, which is what this is. Oh, it's this actually in there? Had. Yeah, it's actually in there. We've got to try these. And look at, the, look at those labels. Those were fresh off the uh, the Epson dot matrix printer of the, the 80s. Wow. This is a show right here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so, yeah. Thank you very much. We You've done it again, sir. Yeah, we don't deserve it. This is awesome. Look at this. <coughs> what, what is this? It looks like filler. Yeah, but what was it? Oh, I don't know. This is a mystery. Broad Poser 6L. Sounds like a, an online handle. If you know what that is, if you know what packaging this is from, let us know. Thank you, O'Briens. This was an awesome package. Yes, I've been waiting um, to get back to open this thing, and I was very happy but waited on me. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be looking at all those games. Uh, I like the fact there's a Munsters game. Yeah, how crazy is that? Who knew? I didn't are know you, the Munsters were even a big deal. Are you more of a or an Adams Family guy? I like the Adams Family more, but I'll tell you, my girlfriend is a big Munsters fan. Mm. So there you go. I like, hey, I love Herman. Um, the guy that played Herman, who also uh, was in uh, My Cousin Vinny, if you've seen that. Have you ever seen that? I saw it many years ago. He was the judge. Okay. What are, I think we've talked about this on the what show is that before. You? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. But the Munsters are good. Uh, horrible, horribly good software. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we got some other feedback this week. <laughs> it wouldn't be an episode if we didn't talk about Rodland and give Rodland some love. So this now, is... What is that? <laughs> so, uh, this is... I, I hate this because I forgot to write who wrote this in. Nice word. But it says you really should give Rodland a go. It's a really fun arcade platformer, has two-player co-op, cutesy graphics, and catchy music. Nothing like bashing some monsters with your magical rod. So, uh, huh. Is that a fact? <laughs> um, magical rod. And uh, and so, thank you, whoever wrote that. It was somebody on Facebook. <laughs> I'm sorry that uh, I didn't. I didn't get your name, uh, and uh, but he did give us some uh, some ideas for future shows. Uh, Crazy Cars Three. Have you heard of that before? I have. Uh, Brutal Sports Football. NGA. I actually I have that on the CD32. I Ooh. think uh, I have not played it. Okay, we haven't done a football game. We are getting close <laughs> to football season. So oh, I know. I yeah. Know. yeah, Brutal Sports. We'll have to give that a shot. Yeah, yeah. He says it's not great as a single player game, but it's awesome as multiplayer. Hey. And uh, Chris Folds wrote in. Talking about a new a piece of kit called Am Amibian. Amibian. Have you heard about this? No. This is a uh, an installer for the Raspberry Pi. You put it on an SD card, <laughs> and it will flash your Raspberry Pi. So I'm basically turning it into an Amiga. So you put this SD card in your Raspberry Pi. It does its magic. Mm -hmm. It's less than 300 megabytes. It fits on an SD card, two gigabytes and up, and. Uh, and all it does is it basically reflashes your Raspberry Pi and turns it into a working Amiga. 
Um, does it does he say what caliber of Amiga this will turn into? My guess is that it will turn into the fastest <laughs> Amiga in the universe. So is this? I mean, I'm guessing in essence though this is some sort of front endy. Yeah, Win it's, UAE it's, it's, it's based on Win UAE. It's just an easy way if you've got a Raspberry Pi laying around and you want to make it your dedicated Amiga machine. This is an easy way to do that. I wonder if there be a way to hook the uh, uh, Amiga drive up to it and use it in some. Because what did we? As I recall, we we talked about a little gimmick mm -hmm. a couple months ago where it was like it looked like just an Amiga drive, but it was the full Amiga with the Raspberry Pi, right? right. So there obviously right. there's some way to do it. Yeah, that that technology. Well, I'm sure that you could do that if you wanted to, but it's it's a really easy to just load up the SD card with some That's ADFs true. too. The the Raspberry Pi is a, th a third one. It, it seems quite a uh, a good piece of kit. And yeah, it looks like something that I'm gonna have to have a good hard look at. I've been waiting for these things to mature a little bit for. Arcade emulation purposes mm -hmm. to rid myself of the pain in the butt that is I'm maintaining a computer in one of these things, and it might be time. Yeah, I've been looking, I've been seeing people test them, and if not now, then the next revision almost certainly because they've come a long way. Absolutely. Um, what news do you have this week? Well, speaking of Chris Folds, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with him. Um, the uh, the Vampire Accelerator. I don't know if you caught this news. I got back from vacation, and today was the first day I got to really look around. And sure enough, uh, Chris sent me a note, or I posted a note, and he said, it was my lucky day, no kidding. Uh, the Vampire, it will be out for the 500, the 2000, and the 12,000. Wow, there you um, go. They, according to what I was reading here, uh, that by Christmas, they will have a 12. They will, the world will see a, a vampire for the 12,000. The 12,000. 12, 1,200. <laughs> well, it's a 12,000 when you put the vampire in it. That's true. It's a 12,000. And 12, adds an extra zero. That's the official function. Um, think about this. Our little beat, I'm looking at it right now, across the expanse of the <laughs> of the boat studios here, uh, that at the old beat down Amiga 500, that thing could have more jack than it could ever have possibly have thought it could mm, ever have. That's true. If we were to somehow obtain one of these vampire cards and stick in there. Um, it's awesome, it's glorious. The thought that you could have AGA graphics on a, on a, on a, uh, a 500 or a 2000, plus all that extra processing power and all the bonus things that come with it. I wonder if adding a vampire card to a 500 <coughs> versus adding a vampire card to a, 12, a 1200, if they essentially become the same machine at that point. I thought that myself. Um, it seems like the answer would be yes, I think. Uh, I don't see why any... I don't know exactly how the Vampire uses the onboard hardware. I mean, obviously it's still used in some, you know, but I don't know how much of a, uh, it plays into the overall speed. I'm guessing very little. Mm -hmm. Considering what the speeds these things are cranking out at, I can't imagine how this, you know, 7.14 megahertz Rock's gonna do. I mean, this thing's boiling a lot faster than mm -hmm. that. So, I don't know. I'm gonna find out. And I I'm telling you, I will beg, borrow, and steal to get one of these early uh, adopter 1200 uh, vampires. It's going in the machine. Yeah. And, and if I can get Dime One together, we're gonna get one for the for the beater over there. That'll eliminate that crazy rig we got anyway. We can take all that. Oh yeah, because you can. Can you do video out from the vampire? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh yeah. It's got HDMI. Uh, and uh, that would be sweet. Yeah. But one thing these guys do, I don't know what they're selling for. I just find I never really checked on the price of these mm -hmm. things. But they, what they've done effectively is they've made every amigo on the planet a modern, you know, usable machine. They've taken something effectively. People have got these things in their closets. They see them every once in a while, you know, garage order. You've got something going on here. I mean, you can really take this old piece of hardware. And use it. Mm -hmm. I mean, do legitimate things with it. Right. You right. know, people sort of like, look, I can play a tune on it. You know, that's and it's all well and good. It's a thirty-year-old machine. A little card goes a long way. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward. This is great news. And if it's out by Christmas, I know what I want for Christmas. Let's put it that <laughs> way. So thanks for sending that over. Uh, I was over the moon about that. <clears throat> um, just a couple little items here. The uh, I came across this thing called the. Uh, classic 16-bit Amiga artwork archive. Uh, I'll kind of gave it a quick look. It's a bunch of old uh, 
graphics, you know, from the old days. Some of them are kind of neat. Uh, we'll put a link up. <coughs> Someone just decided to archive this stuff. What the hell? Mm -hmm. And I've thought about that myself. I've got a bunch of crazy old graphics on old discs and stuff. So, you know, why not? Did you ever get into that ANSI art stuff? <coughs> oh, yeah. ANSI art is a funny thing. Uh, it's funny on Flax show, if you're listening to him, he's, he made an ANSI art picture frame. Mm -hmm. With a Raspberry Pi? Yeah. And uh, I thought that was very clever. Uh, but ANSI art is something you probably hate. I mean, <laughs> it's ugly, blocky art. Mm -hmm. But in the BBS days, it's the only art we had. It was the only art you saw online. Uh, now, is it like pixel art? Like, you know, you look at like a classic <laughs> game and it's all pixels? Or is no. It, okay. Have you ever seen a, a picture made up of of characters on a keyboard? Yeah. Like okay. ASCII. That's ASCII. Right. Is, is ASCII and ANSI, what is different? Well, ANSI... Is the step past that, okay? But before legitimate graphics, picture like a block, mm -hmm. right? They would use these blocks, and you and you could like have parts of a block, and that's how they would make the art. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they would have character mixed in or two. It's it was easy to trans it was easy to uh, to transmit this stuff. It was low. It was it was the it was low bandwidth. It was small, tiny stuff, <laughs> and so. This was what BBSs used. And some BBSs never used a bit of it. And some BBSs were very elaborate. Mm. And this stuff would even have be animated to a certain degree. A lot of it would flash. Mm -hmm. You know, like, welcome to the Batcave. Mm -hmm. I remember it was a board of hunting that had it. And some of these would be very elaborate. And then a lot of cracker groups used them. On the Coco, in particular, they were quite used. And even I, even I dabbled in with the art horribly, I might add. <laughs> uh, but, did, you, did you save any of those? <laughs> I hope not. That would be something we need to put up on the blog. It's horrible. It's horrible stuff. I, I, you never know. I had to get my old Coco discs <laughs> out. But uh, uh, I don't really remember seeing... I mean, by the time I was on the Amiga, the BBSs were still around, but not that big a deal. And they got to a point where they they kind of progressed past ANSI to like there was another generation that was a little bit better. You know, but uh, I know Rob talks about it a lot. And, and, and at the foot of like a lot of a pirate site, you would see it, and and there would be a library where you could download it. Like it'd be porn, there'd be Star Trek stuff, there'd be, you know, any kind of thing you can think of. People, people, and some people were tremendously good at using this primitive, blocky stuff to make some stuff that was depth and mm -hmm. it looked really good. You know, so if you ever, if you ever get bored, I know there's plenty of places out there you can see it, uh, but uh, yeah, it's. It, by today's standards, it's god awful, mm. god awful. <laughs> you know, but some people were very good at using that medium. I mean, there's a certain artistic quality to it that is gone. Mm -hmm. You know, and no one's making it now. I don't figure. Well, and I think that's something that because D paint, you know, something like D paint, you could you could create something that was so much better. But it just the Amiga had so little market penetration that nobody was using D paint relatively. Well, right? There were other programs you could make art on the PC. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of you got to remember. Uh, uh, I remember downloading pictures from a BBS, and it would be like one line at a time right. going about that quick, and that was like twenty four hundred baht. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the logging onto a BBS, you're not going to sit there for a twenty minutes, or fifty minutes, or even five minutes waiting for this picture to download. You, you, these things would be like bam, bam, bam. So the ANSI files would just there. The speed was the. the there weren't even files, really. They were just. It was just like. Transmitting this was just like transmitting text. Okay, <clears throat> and that's why people use the ANSI graph. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So, but anyway, that's a, that's kind of a neat thing. If you check it out, um, <coughs> excuse me. This is a little dated, but I noticed that over on uh, um, the Retro Hour, they had Jim Sachs on there, the uh, Cinemaware. Uh, one of the you know we've talked about him in everything or mm -hmm. Jim Sachs, whatever however you pronounce his name. I haven't listened to the interview yet, but boy, this is a guy. I don't think I've ever heard anything from him. So this is probably pretty good. And those guys are re the Retro Hour guys. Have you ever listened to that show? No, oh, uh, actually, no. I haven't listened to the Retro <clears throat> Hour yet. Maybe I listened to the first one. You, you, you I, acted first, like real enthusiastic. The first, like, first time I was, I was thinking about Retro Asylum, and I always get excited when I think about those guys. Oh, yeah, but th th these guys are... Uh, they get a lot of good interviews. I've seen their blog before. They, and, and, and They get the big names. They're super professional. I think they are professionals like in they're probably, the video game world. They know? probably should have a podcast. And like they, Yeah, they're, these guys like... If you want top shelf Amiga uh, uh, entertainment from a, from shut a, this off right from away a, from a professional, <laughs> the, and I think I think they're British or one's British. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I know it was at least one, but these guys. Could, but I mean, this is probably a pretty good, uh, pretty good interview. So 
that's something uh, to uh, have have a look at. Um, I don't know if there's anything else out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, Guyana Sisters Special Edition. Did you see anything about this? No. Uh, they went back, and from what I, I what I've read, they, they quote unquote DS'd the graphics on it and and made it better. Now I saw some stills of it. It looked great. So what the hell? Have a look at it. You know, uh, it's neat to see that someone's still fooling around with the Great Guyana Sisters after mm -hmm. all this time. So I think that might be cool. Uh, another thing over at uh, um, what's our what's our indie retro news? Yep. I, I saw that they had, someone else had once again put together another one of these compilation discs. I love reporting on them. <laughs> hey, if you get a CD32, I know when I got mine, I was like, okay, what do I do with this? Well, what you do with it is you download these compilation yeah. discs, you know. Uh, and if you don't have a, uh, an, a a proper Amiga and you want to play games, just these things are like a godsend. Now, the, can you just burn just a regular <laughs> Absolutely. CD? Absolutely. Burn it right off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've burned a bunch of stuff for mine. Um, anyway, someone's put together a big uh, Fighters CD. It's got the Body Blows on it. It's got Mortal Kombat's on it. It's got uh, the, uh, what's it called, Paw Fighters, whatever it's called, the uh, Animal Brutal Paws, Paws, Brutal of, Furry. Paws of Furry. Mm -hmm. It's on there. So, hey, it's, that's great. if you're into that sort of thing, and you really want to subject yourself to some of the Amiga fighters? <laughs> hey, I liked them a lot more than him, uh, so uh, I would give them a shot. I, you know, I don't know Street Fighters on there, which is funny. Wow. I didn't. I looked over the logos, and I didn't see it, but it were, I was so small. I was like, I can't tell what's on this thing. So maybe Street Fighter. I don't know. But if Street Fighter's on it, do not play it under any <laughs> circumstances. It is that was no good. Yeah, I'll say not good. Um, I think that is all I've got that came out this week. Uh, that I that I have to talk about. You got anything else? Uh, so uh, Will Williams posted again. He uh, he posted a guide to getting your Amiga on a <coughs> contemporary BBS. Oh yeah, I did see that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if we talked about that. that no, that this came is, out. Yeah, this is that this was is a new one. I love it. I and love that so much. Yeah, it's amazing <laughs> that people are still out there running BBSs. I heard from a guy on Twitter that it was his BBS that that Will connected to. So uh, awesome. I love it that 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 stuff's still going on. We we need to follow suit. We've got the we got the means and the ways to get the old junker on with yeah. the modem we've got. So we should we should try to follow his guide and film that sometime. Yeah, that yeah. should be hilarious. Yeah, uh, Dreamcatcher <laughs> of course has been writing. Man, I think he wrote probably the best thing he's ever written. Have you read his Turrican article? I read. I, the funny thing is, I thought you were going to talk about his uh, his video game sales figures article. Well, we can talk about I it thought, all. I, I read mm -hmm. that today when I was putting uh, stuff up in my Google Plus account. And I'm telling you, man, getting sales report numbers are is God, it's hard. I couldn't find Jack Squat. And he's got a pretty goodly sum of these, and he's got sources. <clears throat> and I was very impressed. And the Turrican one, I, I just looked at it to put it up, but it looks like what did you talk about were the inspirations? Yeah, for the I mean all and I put inspirations in quotes <laughs> for that was the, the way that he lines up the art, you know, side by side. and I saw some of the covers and stuff, and there was no doubt yeah. that these had been worked. This was a, a hell of a lot of work when that thing. Yeah. I told him he needs to send that into Retro Gamer because they... Both I mean, those guys are absolute... Yeah. I mean, Dreamcatch is a stud, and Will stuff, I mean, it's great. Yeah. Uh, you know, and where are you going to see it? Right. How's this on our site? We right. don't know. So, those guys should be doing the show. If uh, if you haven't been there, go over to <laughs> amigospodcast.com and, and give this stuff a good read because it's, it's great. It's outstanding yeah. stuff. Um, he also posted a uh, an article about how nostalgia is good for you. <laughs> I, that one I did read. I, I got an RDO out of yeah, that. So, uh, it's two guys that host an Amiga podcast. We, it's great. We concur. <laughs> um well, that's it for the site updates this week. Uh, what do you say we dive right into the Prince of Persia? Beautiful, beautiful. So, <clears throat> before we start this, uh, we discussed this in, uh, earlier, but you had not played Prince of Persia at any point, right? Right. On any console or Never. anything. Which is astounding <clears throat> if you consider, of all the games we've done, this has got to be the one released on the most systems. I mean... Uh, <laughs> just before we even start, I'm just going to go down the list of these. I mean, this has been released on everything. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I knew it had a, a lot of release, a lot of, uh, you know, a different release points. And I don't mean like it was all released at once either. It was released, I mean, forever and a day. So you've got uh, you've got the, the Amiga version that came out, which I believe it was, yeah, it was 1990. 
And of course, and then you had, let's not forget the Apple II version, okay? Then you had the Amstrad CPC, Atari ST, uh, MS-DOS, uh, something called the Sam Coupe, and I guess this was an unofficial version, hmm. the NEC PC-9801, the Sharp X6800, which that's a great, we've talked about that machine in the mm -hmm. past. These are all from 90, except the Sharp at 91, the Turbo Graphics, the Master System, the Game Gear, Sega CD, the Game Boy, the FM Towns, the Super Nintendo, You'd be better off saying which systems it wasn't for. Oh yeah, you're you're right. Some I can't. I don't know what the heck. I can't even pronounce whatever that is. The NES, the Mac, the Genesis, the Game Boy Color in '99. By the way, on that right, one. right. I remember um, that. the iOS has two different versions. It was called the Classic. Then it was uh, uh, it was called the Retro. Then it was replaced and called the Classic. The 3DS has a version. The Wii unofficial ports on the Enterprise 128. I don't know what that even is, no. do you? The Electronica... It's like a mainframe. The Electronica BK001M? What the hell is that? The ATM Turbo? <laughs> that, that version gives you five. Yeah. The, uh, the ZX Spectrum? The TI? The TI! In 2003, someone pulled wow. it over. Now, the funny thing about this is the Color 64, I remember we... Uh, We've talked about this in the past, before we even started to show that the C64 never had a version of Prince of Persia. Someone ported it over in like 2011 or 12, and I was watching, looking at their at their uh, um, <clears throat> diary on it. You know, they poured it right over. It looks good. Linux. There's a version of this thing out for the Roku streaming box. <laughs> the Roku has a version of this game. So that is a ludicrous amount yeah. of systems. And keep in mind, this is all the original Prince of Persia. <laughs> this is not counting any of the, the rebirth no. from the, you know, the 2000s, any of that. No, it's none of those things. Mm -hmm. um, so it was out in 1990 on the Amiga. Uh, one disc. Well, that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, in the UK, it was released by Domark. Oh yeah, Domark. Now, we have we have we done any of Domark yeah, stuff? Yeah, I know we have. We've done at least one Domark game. That, that's very familiar to me. I look. Isn't up, Lionheart a Domark Domark game? No, no. Domark did. Here's here's what some games I wrote down that they did. They did uh, Pit Fighter. Okay. Remember Pit Fighter? Oh yeah. Done Pit Fighter. I don't think. RBI two. Interesting. They did hard driving one two race drive racing driving stun runner. They did the Star Wars games, you know, the Star Wars, mm -hmm. uh, Empire Strikes Back, Jedi. <coughs> huh. They think... did a bunch of James Bond games, which I thought was weird. And so I looked into Domark, because it's one of those companies you don't hear much about, yeah. right? I don't know why it sounds so familiar. <laughs> well, uh, the funny thing about Domark, I was just reading some history on it. It started in 83, and these two guys were talking about them, to themselves about how crappy distribution of games was. Mm -hmm. They were like, screw it, we don't know jack squat about games. Let's just start our own company. So they got a bunch of stockholders together and they and they uh, released, started doing their own thing. And they uh, the first game they released was this wacky game. And this is a game, I, it's called, uh, I think it was called like Miracle or something like that. But the gimmick was they offered a 25,000 pound prize to the first person to completely solve the game. Mm. I looked around to see if I could find out anything about who won nobody, this and I could Nobody won. <coughs> They secured licenses for Trivial Pursuit, James Bond, Star Wars, and then they'd have other people do them. And then eventually, they developed their own in-house development crew. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, they were just publishing stuff, but now they did uh, They also uh, had a Mac programming team called The Domain, which I never heard of, but they did have another crew called The Kremlin, which I had heard of them, so I don't know what they did, but I've heard of them. So here's the wacky thing. In 90, they changed their name, and then in 95, they were still around, they got acquired by EDOS, really? you know, the Tomb Raider yeah. crew, along with a bunch of other people. They were involved in that big scoop up of, of teams that, that happened over in the UK at, at that point. And so they all became EDOS employees. And a lot of those guys are still in the industry, and some of them are still uh, working for whatever EDOS ended up becoming. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty wacky. That is. That's funny. That uh, it all started with Boom Mark. Yeah. Now, the game is a, is, was a broader bun game. Uh, broader bun. I've always wondered what the hell was up with their name. Have we ever talked about their name, what it is? No. Because it's got the... Uh, it's got the umlaut or the <laughs> accent something. So I looked this up, okay? Um, the company's name comes from the African word 
Broder bond, spelled a little differently, which loosely translates into association of brothers. Okay. Nice. Is it is it Afrikaans? Like Dutch? Afri- A-F-R-I-K-A-A-N-S. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's like Dutch. Dutch. Yeah. And then, but here's the wacky thing. In order to distance, distance themselves from a South American white supremacist group right. that shared the same name, they changed, they put the a Scandinavian O in Oh, there. clever, <laughs> clever. Which is wacky, right? They they were around, I mean, they've been around for a, a long time. Some of my favorite games are Brother Bun games. Um, Old IBM games. <laughs> yeah. They did, uh, a, they've done a bunch of different games, including the uh, Where in the World's Carver in San Diego's, mm-hmm. which those made a, a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing they're probably still around in some capacity, yeah. to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. They did Load Runner. Mm-hmm. They did Mist. Mm-hmm. That made tons they of money. They could have done Mist and retired. Yeah. Uh, they also did Radlebrook Bungling Bay, which was Will Wright's first big uh, gig. Right. So these guys, and they did a ton of, you know, they did a ton of games. Uh, on the Amiga, they did, uh, you know, they were behind some stuff. They did Joan of Arc, which I don't think we ever played there, talked about it. They did a game we've probably mentioned before called Shuttlecock Cafe, which was a pretty big game on the C64. I've never played the Amiga version of it. Shuttlecock like, Cafe is a yeah. badminton game? Uh, it's, I think it, if it's the one I'm thinking of, I, it's been long since I saw it. I, 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 I played on the CC for my buddy's house one time. I know it was popular. Uh, they did the Carmen San Diego's on the Amiga, and they did Wings of Fury, which I have played that. Have you played the Scoop before? <coughs> the Scoop? Yeah. No, I don't have so that. I think this is a Broder Bun game uh, where you're it's a uh, kind of scum engine-like <laughs> thing, and you're walking around trying to solve a mystery. No. I loved the Scoop back in the day. I've not played that. It, no, it was a. It, it was for a. It was for. Was it graphically based? Uh, yeah, game? yeah. It was like it was like a two D scum engine. So you had the text parsers <laughs> at the bottom of the screen you could select, and then you had the the action going on up top. But it was only two D. There was no depth, and, hmm. which I guess was like Maniac Mansion was like that too. So, so the game itself, Prince of Persia. Uh, it's set in ancient Persia. <laughs> Where is <laughs> Persia? Uh, is that's sort of like what modern Iraq is, right? Iran. Iran. Yeah. Do you know what they speak in Iran? <coughs> Persian. Persian. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so now this apparently is stuff that came. I don't know where this information is derived because I never saw anything. In, I've actually had the box version uh-huh. of this for another computer. I don't recall any actual backstory in it. But according to what I found, uh, the Sultan's off fighting a war, and his visor Jafar, who's a wizard. Takes control, throws your guy in the in the clink, mm-hmm. the jail, the dungeon, if you will, and then uh, takes the Sultan's daughter, and he's basically gonna like he's gonna uh, uh, hold her hostage, and you basically you're screwed, mm-hmm. and so you've got to go rescue him. Pretty it's basically stuff. the plot of Aladdin without the. <laughs> well, according to what I read, Mechner was heavily inspired by uh, the Arabian Nights mm-hmm. and Indiana Jones mm-hmm. when he made this game, and so. It's not. This isn't like a, a marvelous. Where did he come up yeah. with this idea? Plot. <laughs> yeah. It's eerily similar to the plot of Karatika. <laughs> come to think of it. <coughs> uh, but uh, so, if you've not played this game on any of its many incarnations, uh, you are a uh, nimble prince who is just wearing like plain white garb in the Amiga version, and you start off. In just a simple dungeon, platformy dungeon looking thing, and your goal is to get through these levels by jumping and and grabbing and climbing and, and defeating various guys in sword fights to, to finish the level and advance to the next level. You have 60 minutes of real time to finish the game, and the uh, and when you die, that you that's the key doesn't. Doesn't keep track of your lives. You can die infinitely, but you've got the X amount of time. And every time you die, you've got to start from the beginning of the level. Mm-hmm. So death can be a real bummer in this. Which I found out while doing this review, while I researched that there's a bunch of cheats I could have been using all these mm-hmm. years, which I never knew about. So there you go, the internet, right? Um, but anyway, you uh, you know you've got one button, and really the button doesn't jump. The button, what the button will do, if you hold it down, you can push forward, and your guy will take like a scooting, like a baby step, is what we used to call it. And then to jump, you can you hit diagonal, or you can hit up. If you want to jump straight up, you hit up. Your guy will jump straight up. And if you hold, if you hit the hold the button and hit up, he'll jump straight up and he'll grasp the ledge above him, and and then you can go ahead and climb one up. 
if you leap across a, a chasm and hold the button, he can make these fingertip grabs on these ledges and hold on, and then you can push him up there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's real. It's the same kind of technique that was used to make karateka was used in this. He he uh, filmed his little brother in the backyard uh, jumping around and running around and rotoscoped it and put it in the game. And the uh, the uh, sword fighting was done from footage of a sword fight in a movie uh, between Errol Flynn and Basil Rathbone. Uh, and he he somehow captured this footage and rotoscoped it. Or I, uh, that's what I was better. Read. I don't know how he could have possibly done that. To be yeah. honest with you, maybe he just reenacted it. Yeah. But the footage is the sword fighting fo footage we were talking about is really cool, and mm -hmm. you really you were really digging it. Uh, it looks like two guys sword fighting in an old film, mm -hmm. you know, basically. But uh, you have fifty. Like I said, we have sixty minutes to get through all the levels and get to the end. Now there's more to it than just jumping and 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 uh, uh, climbing. You have to sword fight uh, other bad guy guards that you come across, and they're one thing I liked about this, there's various colors and shapes. However, there's a couple big fat guards, and there's some tall guards. Mm -hmm. Now they, they dress differently. And the levels, some levels are more like ornate. Some are real dungeony. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have to get past obstacles. There's this like a uh, guillotine like blade, chopping blade that comes from the floor and the ceiling at the same time. If you're in it, the uh, the way of it when it comes down, it slices you in half. This delightful noise. That sounds like it's someone like smashing an apple. Yeah. yeah. Then there are these spikes that can come up. These things you see a lot when you miss a jump, or sometimes you're just in the middle of this room, and if you just screw up and stagger into them like a doofus, <laughs> you know, you can get you'll just get sliced. I mean, you'll just get stabbed with these things. Uh, so those come up a lot. There's also a uh, uh, at one point I think it's on the fourth level, you jump through this mirror. Did you ever get that far? I saw it on the playthrough. <laughs> and when you do. A, n a mirror image of you takes off running the other way, and I always wonder what the hell was up with that. You know, it doesn't really explain it until several levels later, which I never got far enough to see, and to see how it unfolds. Because the, at the very end of the game, that mirror image of you comes out to fight you. Mm -hmm. You know, which was interesting. Uh, but if you can complete this, the, all the levels and get to the uh, last level in 60 minutes, you are and you, f you fight Jafar, and he's tough too. I might add, just from watching some of the guys play it, I've watched several different playthroughs of this, and this was no easy task to beat this guy. Mm -hmm. You are, uh, it's funny, after you beat him, you have to run through like, I don't know, 10 hallways to get to your girl, you know, but she, she she's down there. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to see what would happen if you, I guess you can't walk in there with your sword out like in karate or something. Right. <laughs> so if you walk in there in a fight, she's trying to beat your ass. Mm -hmm. But that you run, you run, hug, and it's a it's a very nice cinematic moment where they get together. It's real, quite quite well now, done. Now, one thing uh, that you didn't mention was the cutscenes that yes. take place in between. So, uh, in between levels, you see your girl, and she's doing various things in the room. Uh, she might be sitting down on the bed. She might be standing up, and there's this rat. I think it's a rat. It's a, yeah, or a mouse, a mouse or something, or something yeah. that comes up and she's like petting the mouse or whatever and it'll run away and stuff. And then at the end, you know, you hug your girl and then the rat runs up and he's part of the scene too. What I like is at one point, and again, I've not gotten far enough to see this happen, but the mouse plays a part in you getting past the level. Really? I must have missed that. Yeah, there's a, <coughs> there's a point where you can't go any further. And you sit there for a minute and the mouse creeps out onto this ledge and activates a pressure point wow. that gets you to pass the level. And the funny thing is, in between that level and the next one, the cutscene is the mouse running back to the girl. And like, I guess she was like giving the giving some help to you right. as best she wow, could. That's mouse, great. Which is clever. I, mm -hmm. I, I love that. Um, it's it's very very similar to karate. It's like a super duper expanded, polished karateka, basically. Well. I don't know. I think that it's it's similar to Karateka in that I'm talking in the look, the, yeah, the, the feel. Yeah. But the game the gameplay itself, you know, uh, even though there's combat in Prince of Persia, the the game is really a puzzle platform. It is, it absolutely. Uh, versus Karateka had none of that. It was yeah, just yeah. fighting dudes. Yeah, the and, similarities pretty much in at the actual way it looks. Right. And the yeah. way the cutscene and story right, is, yeah. Right. Now, I can't remember, in Karka, there are cutscenes in between the different fighters, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, like, for example, the, the bad guy now would go like this, and the bird would fly right. off his shoulder mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. stuff. That bad guy was pretty awesome, too, actually, mm -hmm. I'd say. The, uh, you could tell that Mechner, I, I don't know if you ever, I think we talked about this with Karka, Mechner had this, like, 
Um, he published this piece where it was like all of his notes and his diary from mm-hmm. doing the games. Mm-hmm. And he was under a lot of pressure when he made Prince of Persia because Karate had been a pretty big hit, you know. And he was hoping to follow it up with something bigger. And even when it was released, he wasn't sure mm-hmm. how it was going to go, you know. But uh, of it course, was it was a, a mega, right, mega hit. Even bigger than Karateka. It's funny. Um, I think it was, I read that after he made Karateka and it was a big hit, he ended up going to school. You know, because he was only like sixteen, right? Yeah, he went to yeah. college to get it, and, and he got into a degree in like filmmaking or something. Really, that's interesting. And so, <coughs> the, his video games weren't really his first choice, I guess. Right. And, you know, and so did he do anything after this? Yeah, he did a a game called like Master of Illusions. It was some kind of like a you know was I wish he had put me on the spot. I can't remember off the top of my head the name of this thing. I know it came out in like I know I, I was reading about it coming out in two thousand twelve. He. It was funny because I, Prince of Persia Two, which I think was called Shadow and Flame, I've not played it. It's not on the Amiga, and I had not seen it. I know it's in this. It's in the same vein as this. I don't know why it never came out on the Amiga because it was basically a slightly jacked up version of the first one. <coughs> but I read I read some of his uh, production notes on it. And what he had done is he'd written a Bible as to what he wanted the game to be like mm-hmm. with pictures. He's quite an artist, and mm-hmm. he would sketch out traps and whatnot. And he wrote this Bible, and they sent this thing to a team to make the game using existing, uh, I guess, rotoscope stuff and graphics from the old ones that they were going to tweak. And uh, he said, to his surprise, they made the game exactly like his Bible. Exactly. Because hmm. he didn't expect it because they usually turn these in and they just and right. do what they want. Now, I didn't read whether he was happy that they'd done this or not. <laughs> and I've not... Apparently, I kept reading, reading that uh, Prince of Persia 2 was successful. Mm-hmm. But uh, have you ever seen a box of it or ever played no. it or even heard of it? No. <coughs> Neither had I. Yeah, that's you weird. Know, I vaguely recall it coming out back when I... You know, in the mm-hmm. old days... But again, I, it did not come on the Amiga, so I, and at that point, I was, you know, I, I wonder. I wonder if he maintained any of the name rights or anything like that. So when, when you know, when absolutely. Up, so he made. He, bank he owns. He the, owns yeah. the Prince of Persia property. Okay. Smart man. Yeah. So even he even helped write the screenplay for like the movie, the first and, movie, mm-hmm. and I think the he had a hand in the third to a certain degree. The second one. <laughs> Not the movie, but the but the the remakes. Mm-hmm. He actually worked on the movies too. But the, um, when they came out on the on the PlayStation, that the the the, uh, the PlayStation Two, when they did the Sands of Time yeah, and all those yeah. those games, he like I said, he he had a hand in the first one and the third one. And then when the movie came out, he had a hand in the movie. I don't know to what degree. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he got just a, uh, an associate producer's credit, but I mean, he was he had some involvement because I mean, he went on set. And I've read some stuff where he talked about it. Mechner's a real good writer, and he's and he keeps pretty good notes. And so if you go, he's got a book you can uh, get on like uh, uh, Amazon, and he's got a bunch of like free stuff on his web page. And it's really interesting to, to look through it. I mean, this guy, you can see his whole mindset. You know, it's real interesting. But <clears throat> he said the uh, I remember when the the Prince of Persia series came out, uh, the modern version. The first one was very popular, and I played it, and I was like, man, this is pretty good. You know, I was surprised how good it was, because mm-hmm. there had been an attempt to make a 3D Prince of Persia, uh, and I didn't like it that much. And so this was a more, uh, a more a much better attempt, right? Then the second one came out, and it was really dark and a lot more violent. Mm-hmm. He didn't have a hand in that, and he, and he said he, didn't, he wasn't pleased by that mm-hmm. one, so... <laughs> and I think he made Well, you know, it's funny because I think it was the Prince of Persia that ran into some controversy in England when it came out the movie because the apparently the movie poster was so scary that it frightened children in the subway in, in England or something like that. Do you recall hearing that that story? No, I yeah, I heard that. So they had to withdraw some of the movie posters from public public signage. I uh I only had a little time with those newer games. They're okay. Mm-hmm. They they sort of set the groundwork for the uh, the more modern stuff with Assassins. They remind me of that sort of Assassins yeah. Creed, obviously borrowed heavily mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. from the Prince of Persia series. But uh, overall, the Amiga version, uh, you know, it did it did pretty well. Again, your mileage may vary on trying to find numbers, but apparently it was a pretty good seller. You know, obviously it got ported everything, so they they did pretty well. It did well. Um, it did well in the uh, magazines of the day. Uh, most of the scores are in the you know 80s, 
Uh, there's a few 70s, but most pretty easy. There's a few 90s. So, you know, B, a B, B-plus player mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, so, pretty good. Uh, the uh, the eBay auction action on this thing is actually interesting. I was sort of surprised by it. I found one copy in the U.S. boxed. There were no discs at all for sale in the U.S., none. Interesting. Especially for a one-disc game. Yeah. Uh, the boxed copy right now was going for 92 bucks shipped no that's a pretty hefty price tag for it in the uk there were there were no box copies wow and there hadn't been a box copy sold since may and there were discs that were out but they were the uh, uh sort of the cheap re-release discs mm -hmm. they weren't like the originals they were going for about 13 bucks u.s shipped you know whatever that is in pounds so that's nutty to me. Mm -hmm. A game that popular. So you think there'd be a lot more of those floating around? <laughs> Absolutely. I uh, I can't explain it. I uh, I've seen Amiga box copies of it before. Uh, boy, I wish I'd bought them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, and they're, they're, large. the box versions are actually selling. You know, again, there, there hadn't been any sold right for a while, but they sold pretty well. So mm -hmm. I guess it's a kind of an in-demand thing. Hmm. Go figure. Yeah. Well, uh, before we go. We have an opportunity, uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity, thanks to Dreamcatcher, who's apparently setting this thing up behind the scenes. Oh boy, what happened to our uh, Dreamcatcher's green behind the scenes back here? He's setting stuff up big yeah. time. Um, <laughs> no, that's it's not me. Our green screen just went totally crazy. Um, I think it's because the sun went down. And so, anyway, uh, this is why there won't ever be Amigos the movie. Yes. <laughs> one of many reasons. Anyway, uh, Dreamcatch has been talking to David Pleasance. Beautiful. And uh, there's a chance that he might be able to be on the show. <laughs> so if you have any questions, we're looking for kind of um, off the wall, not common questions that you might be curious about. David Pleasance, inside baseball sort of things. Um, you know, write in <coughs> amigos at amigospodcast.com or leave a comment on this episode on the blog or on Facebook because uh, we want to get this interview going. And we want to ask him some questions that he really enjoys. So, um, uh, try and do that. Like I said, we I don't know if or when this interview will take place, but uh, we want to get that set up as soon as possible. That would uh, be great. I'm, yeah. I'm dying. I, I've been wanting to talk to this guy for a while, so it should be it'd be outstanding. Yeah, yeah. Well above our standards, that's for sure. Um, make sure that you uh, you like us on Facebook. Uh, check us out on Twitter. We're on Google Plus. All those <laughs> links are on amigospodcast.com. Uh, if you want to support us, you could go to patreon.com slash amigospodcast and uh, find out how to do that. I'd like to thank our supporters, uh, Paul Harrington, Lauren Giroux, Loggins, Jonas Rulo, <laughs> Kilborn Barman, Tapes from the Crypt, Adam Bradley, Chris Folds, Will Williams, Daniel Bingston, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage. Thank you again, O'Brien's, for the lovely gift. Oh, yeah. Chad Halstead and Brent Dowdy. Um, and uh, if you decide to follow us on Patreon, we do do a pre-show where we talk about whatever we feel like, mostly other non-Amiga games, uh, pro we, wrestling, the Olympics this we week. We also repeatedly adjust the green screen. Yeah, we it's it's an amazing event. That paid off. Um, so anyway, <laughs> that's our show for this week. Uh, no. Next week, what are you going to do next week? Do you know? Can you remember? We're going to do Cthulhu. Well, it's it's... Cthulhu's not actually in the title, though. Oh, you know what it is. It's the Hounds, the Shadows of the Hound, the Lord of Waterdeep. The Shadow <laughs> of the Hound. <laughs> this is the Cthulhu game for the Amiga that O'Brien sent us yes. last year for Christmas. I've been dying to dig into this We're finally so going to play hard. it. Aaron is a lore master when it comes to Cthulhu, or when it comes to... Uh, um, H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, Robert Louis Stevenson, whatever his name is. I'm a big fan of Lovecraft, y'all. Yeah, and so we're going to do a deep dive into Lovecraftian lore and yes. talk about the game. It's going to be a great time. Next next week, I can't wait for our episode. It's going to be gonna great. It's going to be a beauty. Yeah, I can't wait either. So until then, adios. adios.